Hey everybody, John here, I'll take her forwards, welcome back. Today we're turning one of these into one of these, so stick around. So there's lots of different kinds of rasps you're going to run across. This particular one is a Belota brand or Belada, so it's made in Spain. Anything made in Spain, USA, Germany, Sweden, anything like that, is generally speaking good steel. You want to stay away from anything more from Mexico, China, or God forbid Pakistan. But still a good practice is to go ahead and cut the tang off this thing and harden test it because some of these rasps like to harden in oil and some like water. And depending on what this thing wants to harden in is gonna kind of dictate how thin you're gonna take your edge geometry before the quench. So we're just gonna cut this tang off, harden test it, and see what we can do. So I hardened tested both of these rasps, and I think I'm actually gonna use this one. This is a Save Edge brand made in USA. The only reason I'm using it is because it's slightly thinner, so it'll be easier to grind down to a finer edge. But they both seem to want to harden in water, so that's what we're gonna go with. So you can just take this and grind a knife out of it, and some people do do that. But a better way to do it, in my opinion, is to just throw it in the forge, soften it, and then do your own heat treat. And also, I like to etch the hormones on them for a personal touch, and you can't really do that with this. So I'm just going to toss this guy in the forge. Let that come up be pretty cool and cool on its own to soften it. So my piece of steel is cold now. It's good and soft. I'm ready to start working on the profile, so I've got it marked out just with a Sharpie. And I've got a cutting wheel on one grinder and a hard disc on another. And I'm just going to get as much work as I can with those before I move on to the belt grinder. I've got the profile and the bevels very, very roughed in with the grinder. You don't want to go too thin with this because you can leave gouges you can't get out. You just want to go ahead and remove a little bit of material to save yourself some time and establish kind of a pattern to follow. So now we're just going to move on to the 36 grip belt over here on the grinder. Uh, finish shaping out the handle, bring everything down to true. Shouldn't take much work at all. Here we are after the 36 grit. You see I got the profile trued up, got the bevels roughed in. The edge is about halfway to its preheat treat thickness and I'm going to go ahead and move up to the next grit at this stage because the 36 grit leaves really deep gouges in there that can be hard to get out if you don't leave yourself enough material. So you just take your time and uh, we'll be where we need to go before we know it. So I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about doing bevels by hand. I don't use a beveling jig, you know, nothing against people who do, but I bevel freehand, always have. Biggest thing is consistency, just keeping that same angle as you blade, or drag the blade across. Same thing on both sides. And it takes practice to get to where you can do it repeatably. But uh, if you just keep at it, you'll get good grinds every time. It's a skill I feel like every knife maker should develop. Important note, remember to drill the holes for your pins before you harden the blade. Because even if you don't try to harden back here, it might harden some. And then, you know, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to drill through that. Nothing to it, really. So I'm about here about to normalize this thing to three times and stamp my mark. Important note when doing a water quench, leave your edge considerably thicker than you normally would. This is about nickel thick versus dime thick. The reason for that is water quenches are very fast, very violent. And uh, if you don't have enough mass here in the edge to keep this thing straight, it could warp on you or crack and you might not be able to fix it. So leave it a little thicker. It'll save you a little time later on. <clears throat> So the next thing we got to do is put the clay on this blade to get our hormone. What that's going to do is keep the back of the blade soft, and that real pretty line you're going to see is the mating between the hard and soft steels. So you want to use some kind of refractory cement. I'm using Satanite, but any kind of castable refractory will work just fine. This is just what I've had the best results with. I'm just going to paint it on there. Nice thick quarter inch thick or so layer all the way across. So I've got my water preheated. Edge is just about up to critical. Quench the sky, fingers crossed, no cracks. Oh man, am I relieved. Here she is out of the quench. She's dead straight. She hardened well. Skates a file real nice. I've had quenches like that go horribly wrong on me more than once, so I'm, I'm, I'm done sweating for now. But as you can see, we got this line across here. And if everything went well, whenever we're done with this and we add to that shit, it'll bring that out really, really well. So that's gonna be our hormone. So now it's time to temper this thing really quick. I'm gonna do it by hand with a torch like I always do. Just heating up the back and watching the colors run. Looking for light straw on the edge, so. 
See, we got nice uniform light straw over the whole edge. You don't really have to do anything to the back because it was kept soft during the heat treat. You just got to soften that edge just a tad to keep it from getting chippy. So next thing we got to do is just finish grinding this baby. So I've ground the blade up to 600 grit, polished it, and then cleaned it with some acetone to get all the buffing compound off. So now we'll just go ahead and sit it in our acid. We'll let that sit for about 10 minutes, pull it out, neutralize it with some Windex, clean it up, and then go through that a couple of times to get a really good deep etch on it. Here we go. This is after three 10 minute etchings, so it's been in there 30 minutes total. In between each one, I neutralized it and cleaned it off a little bit so that the acid could get it clean metal. You see what happens is the, uh, I'm pretty sure this is what happens anyway, I could be wrong but the acid reacts with the harder steel quicker than it does with the softer steel, thus blackening your hard steel. So you can kind of see where our hamon line is going to be. So all we'll do now is go ahead and spray this thing down with some Windex. Broke my Windex bottle, but whatever. And just let it sit for about 15 minutes so the oxides will harden up and you'll get a little bit more nice of a contrast than if you just went ahead and buffed it now. So here we are. I've got the blade, the excess oxides buffed off, the hamon took beautifully, you'll see it at the end of the video. It's time to start working on the handle. I got this snake wood I'm going to use. Snake wood is actually one of my favorite materials to use for knife handles because the grain is really, really beautiful. And it's very hard, very dense, very naturally oily. So it's a great choice for a kitchen knife, it's very rot resistant. The only downside is it's expensive and it drives up the cost of a knife a lot, so... Anyway, we'll get the pinholes drilled, get these things epoxied on, and we'll get to shaping this bad boy out. What you're going to want to do this is go ahead and position your scale just about where you want it. Drill your first hole. And go ahead and put you a pin in so it doesn't move. Same thing, drill your next hole. Put you another pin in. And drill a third hole. Next thing you're going to want to do before your glue up is pin your scales together. And then sand the front of these smooth and even and do all the finish work you need to do to them now because once they're on the knife, you're not going to be able to get to them. So I'll do that really quick. The glue up is always a tense moment no matter how many times you do it. So I'm just going to get my epoxy mixed up. It took a little bit of messing around because one of the pins didn't want to go in, but they're all in there. I'll let that epoxy set up and then we'll start shaping out the pins. Here's where we are. We got the handle roughly shaped out. You're starting to see that pretty grain of that snake wood coming through. So next thing I gotta do is hand sand this thing, which is gonna take quite a while because this is a very hard, very dense wood. So, you know, take your time and it'll look beautiful when you're done. Something that can't be rushed. So I've got the handle shaped out to where I like it, sanded up to 220 grit. A good trick for putting a really nice finish on a dense oily wood like this is actually just to take it to a loose cloth buffing wheel. So let me show it to you before we do it. And just gently run it over the whole thing. You don't gotta do a whole lot. So now I got that real nice sheen on there. So just be very gentle. Let the belt do the work. Slowly bringing that edge down. Last step in getting this guy sharp is to strop it. So I've just got my leather strop chucked up in my vise. Just gonna slowly drag the edge, edge across towards me. And this is gonna smooth out and polish that cutting edge on a microscopic level. Again, not something that can be rushed. Exercise and patience, take your time. I'm gonna give it about a hundred swipes on each side, and then uh, we should be good to go. Now we'll just put a nice food safe finish on this baby. How you like that? Some really pretty snake wood, really beautiful hamon line along the whole thing. I'd say this build went pretty well. So here's another look, real pretty copper pins. Hamon came through really nicely. A lot of custom knife makers will ship out dull knives for safety reasons or whatever. I'm not one of those. 
that was always a huge pet peeve of mine. So if you ever buy from me, you will get a sharp knife. Here's just a better look out here in the light. How pretty is that, baby? So uh, she's all done. She's good and sharp. Ready to be sent off to her new home. So thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and uh, check me out on Facebook as well. I'll put a link in the description. Everybody take care, and thanks again.